Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on unique ways your peers use MFT software. I'm Michelle Haig, a Senior Marketing Specialist with Health Systems on the Go Anywhere MFT team and one of your two hosts for this webinar. Hello, I am the other host, Dan Freeman. I'm a CSSP and Senior Solutions Consultant with Health Systems on the Go Anywhere MFT Professional Services team. All right, before we jump in, you should know that we are recording this webinar. And once it's complete, you will get a follow-up email with a link to the recording and slides in case you want to watch it again or share. Also, if you have any questions that come up during the webinar, you are welcome to submit those through the Q&A panel at the bottom of your screen. We will do our best to answer your questions during the webinar if possible. But if we can't get to them live, we will follow up with you afterward via email. If we do run out of time, I promise we have a really good excuse. Dan and I had such a hard time narrowing down our favorite use cases that we ended up sneaking in a few more than 10 here today for you. That is definitely true. Now, also, at the end of the webinar, there is a survey. It should take you less than a minute, but we'd really appreciate it if you fill it out before exiting your web browser. And, of course, say a few nice things about us. <laughs> As you can see on your screen, the agenda will cover several areas of going where that you will hopefully find useful. We're going to try and keep this to an hour or less that you can back to your work day. Yes, indeed. Okay, so one of the things I love most about Go Anywhere is its versatility. Most customers purchase Go Anywhere for a specific task or project, but then find themselves utilizing it for additional things. When I talk about Go Anywhere, I always use the phrase theater of the mind. And what I mean by that is that because the software is so robust and allows you to customize and do so much, it makes it really tough to define exactly what it does because it's so much more than just secure file transfer. I like to think of Go Anywhere as the gift that keeps on giving. Like, you set it up to address a specific project, and then when you're done, you go, wait, I can use it on this project, and that project, and those projects, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, with the various modules that are available and the level of customization and scalability of Go Anywhere, it's very difficult to envision all the things it can do. So customers frequently ask us to share more examples, and that's why we're here today. No theater of the mind is required. You won't have to imagine a single thing since Dan and I are going to go over specific customer examples um, using the different features in Go Anywhere, and hopefully it will inspire you to do the same in your organization. All right, so a lot of our customers are in the healthcare industry, and they deal with sensitive personal information for patients also known as PHI or PII. And plus there's the issue of HIPAA and high tech compliance. Go Anywhere can be used in a lot of different ways to mitigate these concerns. And the best part is it's easy to do. Dan, can you show us how customers do this? Absolutely. Now let's start with secure folders. This is one of the more commonly used and easy features of Go Anywhere. The best part is it leverages technology that virtually everybody knows how to use, the internet. I mean, even my two-and-a-half-year-old twins know how to browse YouTube on Gaga's iPad. Now, granted, they might not be signing in and transmitting sensitive information, but you guys get the idea. Right. All right, let's compare secure folders to traditional FTP solutions. Starting with the most obvious, FTP connections are not inherently secure with usernames and passwords in clear text, whereas secure folders will utilize secure HTTPS connections protected with the latest TLS encryption to ensure proper secure delivery. Now, having said that, hopefully we are not using plain old FTP for transmitting sensitive information. If we are, shame on you, and let's, get, <laughs> let's work on getting that changed to ASAP. Yes. Not only are secure folders secure, what customers are really finding appealing is the ease of administration and user-friendly experience. No longer do admins have to maintain and properly patch an FTP client like WinSCP or FileZilla, thus avoiding yet another potential application threat vector on your network. On the user side of things, they can eliminate another application that they have to know how to use just to do that secure file transfer. With secure folder browser access, users can now drag and drop from their local computers directly onto the web browser interface. It even gives them a, hey, just let go message when the file is in the appropriate landing zone. Now let's take a peek at this clientless solution in action. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the web client here. And we'll log in. This is going to be leveraged via the Go Anywhere HTTPS web client. And we'll use our easy peasy username. Oh, I like that. Easy peasy. 
keep things nice and easy if we know the <laughs> password. Not so easy peasy. All right, we have caps lock on. Oh, we did. Ah, lovely. Yeah, that's what we needed. All right, so here, once they log in, this is where we can look at our secure folders module. You know, notice what we have is a pretty common structure that your backend administrators will give to those web users. Now, quickly stating, those web users, like the Easy Peasy account that we just logged into, those will be defined as users that can log into and leverage any of the services that Go Anywhere is leveraging. In our particular case, we'll be leveraging the HTTPS protocol, specifically the secure folders module. So, on a usual case basis, we have an inbound and an outbound directory. So the inbound directory is usually where your customers will come in to where they can upload certain files. So here we can illustrate, let's take the upload me text file, and there's our just let go message. So they can just drag it from the local machine right into the web browser interface and let go. And that will go ahead and upload the file in there. Now conversely, if we go ahead and look at the actual outbound folder, this is usually where they're going to pick up files. So in essence, they're not going to have upload rights usually. It usually be a place where they can download files. So let's try that same thing. Let's try and upload the file. We don't see the just let go message. In fact, we don't have permissions to upload into this directory. But we can pick files up. So we can go ahead and download them, and we can download them straight to our computer. So as you can see, this makes transferring files very easy for your users. For instance, we have a customer that provides clinical auditing and wanted a very easy way for their users to transfer files containing PHI securely. Secure Folder's clientless, web-based solution made life easy on the users as well as the limited IT staff to support this. So speaking of PHI, a lot of healthcare organizations use Epic. How does that fit into this particular feature in Go Anywhere? Yeah, absolutely. We see EPIC being used by community hospitals, clinics, skilled nursing facilities, and much more. In fact, it is reported that over half of all medical records in the United States are held, are used and held within EPIC. Yep, needless to say, that's a lot of patient data that must be treated as protected health information, or PHI. Now, this PHI will need to be moved and processed from time to time, and we need to make sure that it's secured during the entire process. This is where encryption and automation can step in and eliminate some of those pesky manual processes that are susceptible to human error. Whether Epic is preparing files to be sent out or waiting for files to ingest, Go Anywhere can leverage monitors and triggers to automate this process. Now, file system monitoring is a great way to automate the secure, file, secure transfer of files from Epic out to their appropriate destinations. So let's take a peek at an example of how some of our customers are using Go Anywhere automation features within Epic. Now within this particular case, the customer uses a combination of monitors and triggers to automate what goes in and out of Epic. First, let's look at when Epic generates a file. So here's a monitor that they're using. So let's navigate over to the administrative interface. Under workflows and monitors, we'll see we've got an easy PG, easy peasy <laughs> PGT and SFT put task. So this monitor in essence is picking a folder. So this will be the folder that Epic is generating the files and putting them into. We have a few different types of file events. So if we just want to look for a file that exists, we can just grab that. We've got certain times of days or certain uh, intervals that we can pull that folder. But in essence, what we're going to do is once we do grab certain hits or certain files, whether it's 1, 5, 10, or 100, we're going to go ahead and pass those files into a certain project. This one being easy peasy SFTP transfer. So let's go ahead and look at that project under monitors at our easy peasy SFTP transfer. So in this project, we're going to do a few steps. One, we're going to take all the files, again, 1, 5, 10, or 100, however many were built into that monitor, we're going to PGP encrypt those files. What's the input? It's going to be that parameter of those file lists or that, uh, all those files that are passed in from the monitor. Once we take those files, we're going to take a public PGP key, depending upon what partner we're sending up to. It'll be their public PGP key that we're going to encrypt them with. And we're going to place it into an output files variable called PGP files. In the next step, we're going to connect up to the SFTP server that's going to be associated with the folder that those EPIC files were dropped into. And we'll do a simple put command. 
Now, the source files you'll notice is going to be the output from that previous PGP encrypt step. So we're going to take those PGP files and put them into a destination directory. Now, once we do that, we're going to take the original files, again, that original files variable, and we're going to make a copy of them and put them into our own archive directory for our own process and archive purposes. And then the next step, we're going to delete out those original files so that we don't reprocess the same files. So to see that from a file structure standpoint, let's go ahead and navigate to our source destination archive directories. This will simulate, the source file will simulate where the folder that we're monitoring, where Epic is going to drop off its files. The destination file, this is going to simulate the actual SFTP server that you're dropping the files off to. These will be the PGP files. And then the archive directory is going to be the copy of the original files that we processed. All right, so let's go back to our monitor and turn that on and see what happens here. Now we do have it set for every 15 seconds. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long. A couple of the other cool things within the monitors that we didn't really point out. Um, on the advanced tab, you have a few options, uh, whether file lock or secondary snapshot. And this allows you to ensure that you're not grabbing half-written files or files that are being used by other uh, OS system properties and things like that, as well as some built-in email notifications on success, failure, whether files are found, things like that. All right, so let's go back to those directories, see if those 15 seconds have expired. So we see our source directory is now empty because it did the, the, the delete task. The destination now has the three PGP files, and the archive should have the copy of the original source files, which it does. Nice, very cool. Right, so within here, as you see that this is a way that we can automatically take those files from that folder monitor and then push a project that automatically PGP encrypts and then automatically SFTP puts them to a certain direction. So again, encryption from end to end. Now that talks about the files that we're sending out. Now how about for those files coming into the network, we need to be notified. And the way that we do that is via triggers. Now, in this case, they were using triggers, and triggers are going to be based off of web user activity. So remember that easy peasy web user account that I logged into via the web client and then drag and drop into the secure folder? Yep, yep. That can be a way that we can monitor for that. So here, we'll go to the upload successful trigger. We've got one called easy peasy. We're going to be monitoring for, as soon as it opens up here, for the HTTPS service in this instance, and that's going to be the secure folders protocol. Uh, for purpose of the example, we're going to take the username when it equals easy peasy. If they upload a file successfully, we are going to send an email. There are a lot of different options that you can do, but for purposes of the demo, we'll just show you the, the send email. You'll notice within the subject, we're going to give the event username. This is variable is going to be the actual username that actually uploaded the file. And then event.physicalpath will be the actual file that they uploaded. So, from that earlier example, we should already have an email in here, right here, saying easy peasy, uploaded a file successfully, and there's that upload, upload new text. So that trigger kicked off the email to send to the appropriate administrators so that they can do further processing on those files. Okay, so with users logging into your network to drop off or pick up files, couldn't this scenario present a security risk? Absolutely. Yeah, in this particular case, nope, yep. I was just talking to a customer that runs a health clinic about this very issue. They were using homegrown scripts and staging files in the DMZ, not to mention using plain old FTP. Ooh. Now, first things first, they convinced their clients to support a secure protocol and spun up the SFTP listener on Go Anywhere. Secondly, they brought all their sensitive information back into the private network. Now, how are they able to do this and allow outside customers access to those files without increasing that threat vector to private network, you ask? Well, introducing the Go Anywhere Gateway. Ooh. Now, the gateway eliminates two pain points. One, getting your files and secure information out of the DMZ and back into the private network. And two, brokering these connections to the files all without, without not having to open up inbound ports on your private network. Now, let's take a peek and annotate how exactly this works here. So again, upon startup, Go Anywhere is going to open up what we call a control channel from inside the network, out the firewall, so again, an outbound port, 
go to that actual instance, whether it's Windows or Linux, where Gateway is installed, and it'll give all its IP, port mappings, basically all its proxy information. So that when you have an outside user, and we'll say easy easy coming in on HTTPS on port 443, when they come in, the way that we're going to authenticate them is go over that existing um, control channel, again, not inbound. It's going to say, hey, I've got easy peasy here coming in on 443. If the username and password, all credentials check out, we're going to open up a separate data channel, again, an egress port out that firewall, and this will go ahead and broker that connection where data will flow. So now we've got that secure information and a couple of things, no files, everything being staged within the DMZ is just streaming through the actual gateway. And probably most importantly, we're not increasing that threat vector by not opening up inbound ports from the DMZ into your private network. Okay. All right. So we've talked about ways to securely transfer files via the web to replace traditional FTP clients. So now let's talk about another common form of communication that everyone uses, email. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Now, being a formal Microsoft Exchange admin, I can definitively say that email is used and most definitely abused. <laughs> now, in steps, go anywhere, secure mail module. Now, given the proliferation and popularity of using email as a de facto communication method, secure mail can really come in handy. So what are some of the advantages for customers who are using our secure mail? That's one you should ask, because I have a slide next that goes through a few of those. All right. All right, first, size doesn't matter. Now, from the user perspective, how annoying is it when you get an undeliverable message because the attachment you tried sending exceeded the send the connector maximum size limit? Very annoying. Yeah. Now, most email servers cap attachment size off at around 30 meg or lower, and that is not a viable option for a lot of file transfers nowadays. Now, from an administrative perspective, how annoying is it when the email system is running like a dog and come to find out someone tried sending a 200 meg attachment to the all company distribution <laughs> list? Super annoying, yeah. Now the latter can be addressed by the next bullet point here. All secure mail contents are placed in a central repository in what we label a packages directory. Now each email is placed in a parent directory with the current date as a name, which by the way is created during the first email sent on any given day and then creates a subfolder using a unique 36-byte string where the specific email contents are placed into. A URL is generated to specifically point back to this package or folder using the HTTPS listener set up in Go Anywhere. So you can send a secure mail to multiple recipients and they will all point back to that folder and download the contents via the HTTPS protocol, thus eliminating the multitude of unmanageable email attachments and content throughout your mail server. Now, did I mention all the packages directory is encrypted using NIST-approved AES 256-bit algorithms at rest protection, as well as leveraging TLS encryption for the data in transit? Again, providing an end-to-end -end encryption solution. Now, for our customers, this provides an easy and secure way to leverage email to properly send sensitive information. But another benefit that was asked by our customers in the unfortunate event of a breach, a lot of customers have regulatory compliance obligations to report such events. Most states have their own breach notification rules along with the federal side, if applicable, and Secure Mail Central Repository makes it feasible to at least be able to report required information on what and how many documents were breached. Furthermore, and probably more importantly, our customers can prove due diligence since all sensitive email docs are now encrypted at rest and unusable by would-be hackers. This is significantly, this can significantly reduce, if not eliminate, substantial fines. Just another side benefit of the Going Anywhere Secure Mail. That's a great side benefit. Right. All right, so now let's take a look at a couple of the ways that we can send secure mail. I'm going to go back to our web client, and let's go to the secure mail feature. And let's like put the log back in as easy peasy. Let's see if we get the password right this time. All right, so here within the secure mail feature here, if you've ever used Outlook Web Access, it looks very similar, uh, at least the menu choices here. But here we can compose the message. We'll just choose our Linoma portal and send a test message. We do have a few options that we can configure. Um, required registered users, which just means that you would have to have a web user account created for you to actually come back in and view that email. 
You can expire the package after a certain amount of days. You can choose a read receipt, which, by the way, actually will give you an email notification, whereas we all know when you try and do a read receipt in Outlook, um, most people click no and don't ask me again, and it doesn't actually send a read receipt. Let's go ahead and send this off. You can password protect or allow replies. So for now, we'll leave it wide open just so you can see the actual contents here on the recipient side. So we'll send that email out. We'll go to my Lenoma Portal Gmail account. And don't fail me now. Come on, Gmail. Let's get there. All right. So now we've got our easy peasy email. And you can see that I've got a message sent from dan.freeman at healthsystems.com. Here I can click on the message, but one thing you'll notice, that URL, it is pointing back to our HTTPS portal, and then we've got that unique 36-byte identifier, which matches specifically to the folder that was created for this specific email. So that when I click on this, you'll see it get redirected, and it's actually pointing back into that packages directory. You go ahead and pull that email back. All right, the other way that we can do email is going to be through our Outlook web, our Outlook plugin. Uh, let's say Outlook is probably used 95% of email clients. Uh, we do have an executable as well as an MSI package, depending upon how you wanted to deploy that. Uh, without going through actually a generation of an email, it's very similar to the web client. The one thing I did want to point out is we do have some options for folks that accidentally hit the regular send button when they meant to send a secure mail. So here, the options can be all file sizes. So if you have an attachment and this is the option you have chosen, it will automatically use secure mail, whether you want it to or not when you have to send secure mail. We have seen a couple customers use this, being in the healthcare provider industry, the users that had secure mail, they were heavily using and sending PHI via attachments. So this is their catch-all way of making sure that no PHI leaves their network unsecured. Now, having said that, most people match this or use this configuration setting to match up to their exchange send receive connectors so that they can avoid that annoying, hey, your message attachment limit was too high, and it just uses the secure mail feature. Okay. Right. So with all the sensitive information, what about virus scanning and content filtering? Can we address how customers are handling that in Go Anywhere? Yeah. In fact, just the other day, I was talking to a customer who was using going to secure mail to send emails, just like we just saw, but wanted to go a step further and integrate their DLP and antivirus server. Now, Go Anywhere can leverage ICAP as a means to connect to these types of servers. ICAP has been adopted by most DLP antivirus application appliances and or applications. Within Go Anywhere, we would add the ICAP server as a resource so we could call on it to do some file scanning. So if you're using content filtering, whether DLP or antivirus, it might interest you to know that Go Anywhere is built in ICAP integration. Sounds great. So how easy is it to use? Okay. Well, let's take a peek at an example based on the customer I mentioned. Now, this customer, again, was already using secure mail, but wanted to make sure that they weren't sending viruses along with their sensitive information. I mean, who wants to be that company, right? Right, nobody. Okay, so first they added the ICAP server as a resource and then configured a before secure mail send trigger. So for that, let's go back to the administrative interface and go to the actual resource. And within here, we do have ICAP servers. So you would add your ICAP server and upon the URL and any other applicable information. And with all resources that we have here, we do have the test button that will test for that not network connectivity as well as any credentials if applicable. If it's successful, then we're good to go. Now we can leverage that within projects and in our case, and triggers here. So again, these guys were trying to send secure mail messages, but not only do they want to send them secure, they wanted to check and have it sent to the DLP server to make sure there was no viruses before the messages got encrypted. So if we go to the trigger section, Let's go to the before secure mail send. We'll look at the scan mail for viruses. And this is going to go off anybody, well, actually in our case, just D Freeman, when he sends a secure mail, it's gonna kick off his trigger. Now, traditionally for you, you would probably leave the conditions area blank and just have it be universal. So anybody who sends a secure mail, you want to, in our case, we're gonna call a project. And this project is going to be scan file using ICAP. So let's go ahead and navigate to that scan file using ICAP project. <clears throat> and 
once we open this up. So anytime that I send an email via secure mail, this is going to happen before the package is built. So we'll do this with Wallet Sinclair text. For each attachment, this is a simple for each loop. It's going to loop through the attachment list and take the current item, so each the you know, first, second, third, and on down the line, and it's going to scan each individual file. This is going to point to your ICAP resource. This is what you defined earlier in the resources, and give it an ICAP status code. Now, each ICAP status code will be configurable depending upon which ICAP server you have. In our case, we're using a status code of 204 as a file that is clean. So if we look at our conditional, if virus found, meaning if ICAP status code does not equal 204, then I'm going to send an email saying, hey, by the way, your email is denied due to policy restrictions. And then we're going to deny the secure mail message, meaning we're not going to actually send the email and exit the project. If not, then we're just going to send, go ahead and send the email on and also send me an email notification saying, hey, by the way, that secure mail is sent successful. So let's take a peek at one of those quick. Let's send this out to the GNOME portal. And let's attach my clean file that I know has no viruses. And let's send it securely. And we should get an email here saying that that was sent successfully. And there it is. Okay, so it says secure mail was sent successfully. And then on the other side of things, if we go to my Gmail account, we should see that email here with that clean file, that doc file. So in this instance, we could just click on that, go back, read the email, and then actually download the clean file, that doc file. Okay, cool. So one of the other things just real quick to look at uh, from this standpoint, looking at the actual trigger, go to the audit logs, and look at the trigger and see that that trigger was successful. And not only that, go to the actual completed jobs log, which will actually look at the job that got called because of that trigger. And just kind of going through here, you can look at the actual nitty-gritty details of when it actually begins an ICAP request, uh -huh. where it's at, the actual allow code. It passes back or does the return status code of 204, which means the file is clean. So we're going to skip the if virus found block, as, as the condition was not met. And so we're going to go on down here and send the actual email on to my the normal portal account, as well as the confirming email to my help system account to let me know that that file was actually successful. Very cool. And anyway, while we're here, before I forget, uh, I do want to show the request files feature. This is another one of those cool secure mail features with allowing for truly ad hoc and one-off scenarios for customers to send your secure and or large files via email. Now this can be accomplished by leveraging the request files feature that we introduced last year. Yeah, this is a great feature. So many people have video surveillance cameras and video doorbells these days at their homes and businesses. We actually have police departments using the request files feature in Go Anywhere Secure Mail in order to give the public an easy way to upload their large video surveillance files whenever they file a police report. <laughs> All right, we can expire the request. We'll say after two days, let's go ahead and send this out. From the user perspective. And this is basically exactly what they're doing. Yep. So now I can just request from Joe Blow, who doesn't have an account in the system, um, very ad hoc, and it says, hey, go ahead and click here to upload your files. This is where they can, again, either click on the browse to attach files or leverage their drag and drop and then hit the yeah. send files button. Now that allows them to use secure mail feature, even though they're not a user on the system and don't have that functionality. Awesome. Oh, yep, another example, customer example is the university that is using secure mail to send orientation packets and document, documentation to students who are registering to attend. Again, a really easy way to send, receive, and track large files easily at any time. It's great that you can request large files through secure mail, but can we explore how a few customers are making this a more public-facing process with our secure forms? Sure. In <laughs> fact, secure forms was recently used in an election by one of our government clients. 
Now, they built a form, embedded it in the website, and allowed users to publicly access and send information using large attachments. So how'd they do it? Well, they did send out absentee ballots as physical forms for people to fill out. The users would take a photo of the form and save it as an image file. Then they would navigate to the secure form via a public website, enter in some basic information in the form, and then drag the image file created from the photo into the web browser form. When they submitted the form, all the information would be sent to the appropriate folder depending upon which county they were registered in. These folders would be de defined in Go Anywhere Go Drive module and would kick off a trigger to send the files to an ICAP resource for antivirus scanning before actually being uploaded to the network. So very similar to the before send secure mail, we have a before upload Go Drive document that can send things to an ICAP server to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the file or anything on the virus before actually uploading to your network. Now once finally uploaded to the GoDrive folder, these files will be sent to the appropriate county SFTP server and an email notification sent out for the associated admins to grab the files for processing. Okay. All, right. All right, so let's take a quick peek at an example secure form based off of this very project. All right, for this, let's go back into our administrative portal here. Let's go to services, secure forms. And of course, we've got our easy peasy vote form. Mm -hmm. All right, so for here, when building out the secure form, we can navigate to this component section here and pick out the appropriate fields to represent the information we want to grab from users. So you can see there's a lot of different formats here. Uh, we did some simple text fields just to grab first, last name, voter ID, and then the actual file upload area to where we can upload one or multiple files within here. Some of the other things you'll notice upon component um, building out these forms is each individual text area or whatever input item that you put in here is going to have an associated variable name. Now these variable names will be passed back to the project as parameters when the form is actually submitted. So access can be granted in a variety of ways, but for this example we can choose public access. So this customer allows users to enter in the information in this public form and then upload their ballot picture file. The project would do some validation on the information entered in the field to navigate to the appropriate folders, as mentioned before, and the photo could be used by the admins as further validation for information. So for what the public user was seeing, they were getting the actual um, absentee ballot, and this link here, where they could click on, come to this public form, and type in some information, PZ, voter ID, whatever it is, and then again, as we've seen multiple times, we can use our drag and drop to drag that photo file up into this image here. And then once we hit the submit button, this is where behind the scenes, it's actually going to call a project and pass all of those fields as parameters into that project to do whatever it is it's doing, all the things that we decided here. This particular project, I just sent back a message saying, you have successfully submitted your absentee ballot. Thank you. Yeah, Secure Forms is one of my favorite modules in Go Anywhere because it's so adaptable. I was on the phone with a customer in local and city government, and we probably talked for like two hours about how they were using Secure Forms. It was fascinating because basically they have it set up to allow city residents to apply for new utility services. So on the consumer-facing side of their website, they have a Secure Form that people can fill out with their new address, the date to turn on service, like gas, water, and trash, pick up along with Personal, identif personal identification information. So people have to actually attach copies of their ID, their ownership rental agreements, and so forth, and it's all done securely through secure forms. Once they submit, a confirmation is automatically sent to the consumer, and it kicks off a series of internal processes within Go Anywhere, where the city admins then log in, view the submitted forms, and use that information to create the customer's account. If information is missing, they have additional secure forms that they can use in it internally to kick off a series of email communi communications and request additional information and files in order to complete the customer setup. So the customer gets this, they upload their missing information and resend, and then that's once again reviewed by the admin, who then sets up the customer's utility services, and then everyone lives happily ever after. That's the super simple version of what they're doing. But I thought it was really interesting to hear about how they really dug in and took advantage of the flexibility and power of secure forms to streamline the whole process 
both externally and internally. Yep, and I think that is a really cool use of secure forms and something that we find a lot with our customers. That is, they drive a lot of innovation and new features that keeps going on the cutting edge. Now that, coupled with the very responsive and very skilled dev team, yes. makes for a visionary and feature-rich product. For sure. Our dev team is awesome. And speaking of awesome, I just learned about a recent customer who sells and distributes adult beverages and is using Go Anywhere to track their containers. I think you've worked with them. So what can you tell me about this one? Yeah, this one is actually pretty cool. Now, with the help of a third-party OCR product, they're able to inventory and track all packages. So they have their warehouse fulfilling orders and putting products into containers that are put on their conveyor system. Then cameras take photographs of the barcodes pulling off information from the labels on the containers before they're loaded into the trucks. That is super cool, but how does Go Anywhere really factor into this? All right, well at a high level, they're using information from the barcodes, again, where that OCR product comes in, to formulate the file names as a way to tie the containers and their contents to a certain directory, which can then be read, parsed, and data inserted into a database, which other systems access in order to do things like track a shipment. So, for instance, say a container makes it into the truck. It's delivered to the customer, and then they call and say part of the shipment was missing. Now, using this system and, and go anywhere, our client is able to track in detail the contents of every container in a shipment along with which truck it was loaded onto, when, and additional providing visual proof. In essence, Go Anywhere can automate the tracking, auditing, and reporting of all container shipments. So talking about adult beverage inventory automation naturally makes me think of great food. Yeah, yep. <laughs> like specifically fried food for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does Go Anywhere make for great fried food by any chance? Hmm. That is a very specific, <laughs> out of left field question, Michelle. No, but I guess in a roundabout way, yes. Go anywhere can aid in the process of making great fried food. Excellent. Now, we do have a customer, manufacturing customer, that uses Go anywhere to push out the latest firmware updates to their equipment. And actually, I'm sure you've come to the conclusion that some of these machines are food yes. fryers. Indeed. Using a combination of the FTPS protocol, as well as some file name manipulation and parsing, these fryers will check a dynamic folder location to see if they need to pull down and install the latest firmware. As we all know, keeping up to date with the latest software can invariably lead to the perfect french fries, fried pickles, <laughs> fried green tomatoes, or who can resist the delicious fried donut. Oh, yum. Yes, fried anything. Now I'm hungry. All right. Better switch gears. So do you ever watch the news to get the weather report? Uh, yep, and it's always <laughs> wrong when I want to ride my motorcycle to work. Great. Right? So can you imagine what it would be like if you were in Alaska and if you flew to work? Uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to know what the weather's going to be if I was flying to work. It just so happens that one of my favorite Go Anywhere case studies was one for a government entity that's using over 700 cameras all over Alaska to take photo sequences of current weather conditions, because you know weather can be pretty extreme up there, and so that the pilots can see weather firsthand and not just rely on the weather reports. Yep, because we all know how those can be. <laughs> exactly. So the cameras serve up those images as they come in, at least once every 10 minutes, and then Go Anywhere watches for them, grabs those image files, and sends them up to a database. With the tablet, the pilots can, ch the pilots can choose which camera or cameras they want to see, access the images in real time while flying, and this lets them literally see what the live weather conditions are between each mountain range before they fly into it. And the cool thing is, yeah, that you can play back the images in a loop and see the timestamp, so you could adjust your flight accordingly based on whatever, whatever weather happens to be rolling through at that time. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. So are you saying Go Anywhere <laughs> saves lives too? Oh, it's saving mine. Uh, it could, could be a stretch. <laughs> Right. All right. Anyway, I think the last one that we can dive into is a customer case for an insurance company where they needed an extra data point between Salesforce and their internal systems, but but uh, Salesforce did not have an, uh, did not support an SFTP connection. Ooh. <laughs> so, and go anywhere by enabling the API behind Secure Forms, they were able to create a secure endpoint to allow developers on the Salesforce platform to send and receive data files between their system and the insurance companies. 
So connectivity through SOAP and Rust is a hot topic these days. Should we give everyone a sneak peek into the upcoming release of Go Anywhere 5.7 next month and an exciting new feature that addresses this? Hmm. You must be talking about cloud connectors. Right? Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> rather than using SOAP and REST APIs and Go Anywhere to manually connect to systems and software, the new cloud connectors will have several out-of-the-box options ready to go that allow you to instantly connect with many popular products being used in the enterprise. And you guys want to take a quick peek? Yes, yes, yes. Show us. All right. Ooh. Ooh, there they are. I love it. Hey, wait, where did it go? <laughs> hey, talk about a sneak peek, Dan. What? Uh, yeah, well, if you want to learn more about cloud oh, connectors and okay. other features and improvements that we've made for Go Anywhere MFT version 5.7, be sure to join me in a couple weeks for this webinar as I will be doing an in-depth demo at 10 a.m. Central on June 14th. You can register to attend on GoAnywhere.com. Okay, I am registering as soon as we finish here. And speaking of finish, it looks like we are about out of time, but we've got one question from a, a viewer. Um, how many monitors can I set for every 15 seconds and not worry about Go Anywhere's performance? Okay, a couple ways. Oh, there again. <laughs> couple, <laughs> couple ways, I guess, to answer that. Um, one thing from a global settings perspective, one point to note is on the runtime tab, you do have the maximum concurrent monitors that can run at any given time. By default, it's at 20. You can definitely increase these uh, up to 40, 50, 60 if you want to. Uh, but the main things you're going to have to look at is your OS resources, whether CPU, memory, even the JVM memory that's that associated with the Go Anywhere product. If you're running into issues there, I guess I would say go ahead and increase those. As okay, cool. All right. So hopefully some of the examples we shared here today will help you envision new ways that you can use Go Anywhere in your organization. Before we go, I want to give a shout out to all of our customers out there who have been willing to share with us how they are using Go Anywhere. We love hearing about the different ways people use our product. And you can go to the community forum at GoAnywhere.com and share your story with us. And we'll also share a link for that in the chat panel on your screen. Or um, you are more than welcome to email Dan or I, and our emails will be up here in just a second, if you would like to reach out and tell one or both of us your story. And also I'd like to mention that each of you will be receiving our brand new guide along with the webinar recording. It's called the Go Anywhere Book of Secure File Transfer Project Examples, where you can get even more inspired as you read about 15 different use cases for Go Anywhere. And for those of you who are watching this webinar on demand, there's a link at the bottom of the screen where you can go to download a free copy on our website. Also, if you are interested in utilizing different features to go anywhere and need a little help getting started up or steered in the right direction, let me remind you that a professional services division, of which I am an esteemed member, <laughs> would be more than happy to assist you. You can just shoot me an email, which I will immediately forward to one of my colleagues that actually do the work, <laughs> or contact support staff at any time to schedule a consultation. We can do everything from helping you plan out a process to implementing and or troubleshooting your going or setup. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us. And feel free to contact Dan or I if you have any questions, feedback, or want to share your Go Anywhere story. Um, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later.